All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, Let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a meddler in other men's matters. But if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this name. <clears throat> that name, Christian, very definitive, yet used quite loosely by a majority of the religious world today. You know, <clears throat> not too long ago, it was thought by the common people that if you were not a Jew, then you were a Christian. A very loose uh, construction. Uh, friends, the term Christian is very definitive, and we need to appreciate that fact. As a matter of fact, some years ago, there were a number of people who wanted to establish an organization that would eliminate the differences or criticism or judgment, maybe, of one religious body concerning the other. Can you imagine such an unscriptural arrangement if that thing had come into existence? You recall what Jesus said, what is that, Matthew chapter 10, about verse 34, beginning? Think not that I came to send peace upon the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. I came to set a man at variance with his father, daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own house. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that will not bear his own cross and follow me not worthy of me. He that would save his life shall lose it, but he that shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Friends, uh, Christianity is a positive way of life. Uh, Jude, you remember, said, while I was giving all diligence to write unto you concerning our common salvation, I was constrained to write unto you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered unto the saints. The faith has reference, of course, to the system of faith, the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. What did Jude say here? The only chapter, of course, so what about verse 3? Contend earnestly for the faith. Now, contend? Uh, Jude, that sounds as if there would be uh, contention. Uh, why, certainly. They didn't crucify Christ because he won a popularity contest. Uh, no, no. They crucified Christ because there He stood, and He stood only for truth, and that is in opposition to all error. And it was the religious people, of course, who crucified Him, envy, jealousy, and He is teaching truth, and they believe uh, falsehood. They're following human philosophy, and He is trying to inform them of the salvation that is made available through His shed blood. But they, of course, pay no attention to it. Well, does that change the message? Did Christ change His appeal? Did He change His approach to... No, no. No, no. The truth will make you free. John 8 and verse 32. Oh, Jesus said, Sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. John 17 at verse 17. There is only one way of salvation. Not uh, many different ideas and opinions. Being religious, of course, is of no value uh, per se. One has to be a Christian. A Christian? Yes. How is that term defined? Just uh, how would we uh, describe a Christian? Oh, a Christian is one who belongs to Christ. I think we understand that. In 1 Corinthians, you remember, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. No, you're not. That your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which you have from God, 
and you're not your own, but you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, someone reads that, and if we aren't careful, we'll say, well, I don't like the idea of being purchased, but ooh, yes. If you comprehended the love of God, if you knew anything about the sacrifice that God's Son made to redeem your soul, you would be delighted. You would be thankful beyond your ability to express the fact that you have been purchased. Now, someone says, well, uh, that makes me, uh, you know, an article uh, of commerce. I've been, no, 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 no. You see, when man transgressed the prohibition of God in Eden, the human family was alienated from God. So mankind in the world is without God and without hope. Christ came to purchase me from the lost state and provide for me the hope of eternal life. Yes, sir. He redeemed my soul from eternal ruin by the shed blood that is applied in my obedience to the gospel. Oh, I am thrilled that Christ purchased me into his fold. Yes, sir. Uh, we think in terms of, you know, slavery. Well, there's nothing wrong with that term at all. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you remember, uh, Paul pointed out if one is a bondman and is, of course, saved by the blood of Christ, oh, he's the Lord freed man. Oh, if one is a free man oh, and is redeemed by the Lord, he's the Lord's bondman. What is he saying? Friend, when I become a child of God, a Christian, then my responsibility, yea, privilege, is to be Christ-like in my thought, speech, and conduct. What was Christ like? Well, He came to deliver the only message that makes possible human redemption, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, but uh, most men don't agree with that, right? But if you preach it, then you're going to have contention. Why, certainly. What uh, did Paul say to Timothy? Second Timothy chapter 4, I charge thee in the sight of God and of Christ Jesus, who shall judge the living and the dead by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be urgent in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. But having itching ears will heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts. They'll turn away their ears from the truth. Ah, to be turned aside unto fables. Be thou faithful in all things. Suffer hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill thy ministry. Through verse 5, just a moment. Preach the Word. Yes, no, no, not your opinion about the Word. Not what you think this means. No, no. Uh, this book is complete. And uh, everything is uh, fully explained relative to any particular point of your relationship to the Almighty. Uh, this is a basic unit. Every word in this book is in harmony with every other word. And if you have some misunderstanding about a particular point, it's cleared up when you begin to read all that the Lord has said on that subject. It is so important that we put it together as it is written. Isn't that what Paul said? Second Timothy 2.15 rightly dividing the Word of God? Yes. Oh, yes. We have to put it together as it is written. Oh, the Lord illustrated that point in one of His temptations, did He not? In Matthew chapter 4, oh, old Satan quoted the Scripture. Yes, sir. Psalms 91, about verse 11 and 12. He'd put Jesus on a pinnacle, and He said, Cast thyself down, if thou be the Son of God, oh, for it is written, He'll give His angel charge concerning thee, on their hands they shall bear thee up, lest haply thou shouldst dash thy foot against a stone. Mm, wait a minute now, that's Scripture. Why, certainly it's Scripture. What did Jesus say? Oh, He said, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So one Scripture modifies or qualifies another. Until we have all that God has said on any one subject, we do not have the truth, as we've said many, many times. Psalms 119, verse 160, the sum of thy word is truth. So what is a Christian? Oh, a Christian is one that belongs to Christ. He redeemed me with his blood. As a matter of fact, uh, bought 
with a price. First uh, Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, knowing that you were redeemed, not with corruptible things, with silver and gold from your vain manner of life handed down from your fathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I have been redeemed, cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, that's correct. You know, sometimes people come along and they'll say, well, now, Christ shed His blood for all men. Oh, no question about that. Yes, sir, He died to provide salvation for all of mankind. Uh, no question. However, most men are lost. You're aware of that, of course, and we've noted many times, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter ye in at the narrow gate. For broad is the gate, and wide is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. But narrow the gate, and straightened the way that leadeth unto life everlasting, and few there be that find it. So most men are lost, despite the fact that Christ died to bring salvation to the human family. Uh, that's correct. And you know, that gets uh, next to the old idea that some have as a bone of contention that oh, man has no part in his salvation. No, no. It's all together by the grace of God. Isn't that interesting? That would make God responsible for the majority of mankind who is lost. No, no. Well, preacher Titus 2.11 says, The grace of God hath appeared bringing salvation to all men. That's right. No question about that. Just like Christ shed His blood to provide for the salvation of all men. But most men are lost. How so? Well, notice the context. For by grace have you been saved through faith. Oh, that's Ephesians 2 verse 8, isn't it? What's that? By grace, that's God's part. Have you been saved through faith? That's man's part. Oh, back to Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God hath appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us uh, to the intent that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself up for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto Himself a people for His own possession, zealous of good works. How does He do that? Well, somebody says that that's all together by the grace of God. Christ shed His blood for all men, so then man doesn't really have a... Friend, if man doesn't have a part in his own salvation, why are most men lost? He did shed His blood for all men. Oh, indeed. The grace of God hath appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Well, absolutely. No question about it. Well, then why are most men lost? Because they're not walking by faith. They're not doing what the Lord said do. I remember that Jesus said, except you believe that I am He, you'll die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. Well, He also said, Luke 13, 3 and 5, except you repent, you'll perish. Sure. Oh, and He made it very clear in Matthew 10, 32 through 34, as well as in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that we must confess Him before men. Oh, and He said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned. So one must hear the gospel, faith cometh of hearing, and hearing with the word of God. Or oh, then believing it, he is to turn from the practice of sin. Upon an acknowledgement of that faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, he's buried with his Lord in baptism. That's right. Yes, say. Well, that means that I have been purchased by the blood of Christ. Why, sure, he shed his blood to seal this covenant. Where a testament is, there must of necessity be the death of him that made it. For a testament is a force where there hath been death. For it doth never avail while he that made it liveth. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 16 and 17. So the only possibility of the application of the blood of Christ is through my obedience to the blood-sealed covenant. Right. The instruction given in this validated last will and testament of Jesus Christ is the only possibility of my standing in a right relationship with God. Well, oh, sure. That's what makes you a Christian. You are a Christian. You have given your life to the Lord. He purchased you. He redeemed you by His blood. Indeed. 
Oh, but most men are lost. Right. That's because most men do not walk by faith. They simply do not embrace or obey the instruction that the Lord has given upon which is predicated our salvation from sin. You know, too many people want to say, well, now, oh, that's foolish, or that's irrelevant, or that's non-essential, or I don't see any sense of friend. Friend, the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Their foolishness to him, and he cannot know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. Well, that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Open to us who are saved, it's the power of God. Isn't it amazing? Men are simply not aware that salvation is by faith. Oh, now they talk about that all the time. In fact, many of them believe that salvation is by faith only. Uh, Of course, that's totally foreign uh, to the Word of God. But many do not understand the principle that salvation is by faith. You see, faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah, but somebody says, preacher, there's some things in there that don't make sense. Uh, Right, Uh, physical uh, sense, right. Oh, that's why God chose the foolish things uh, to confound the wise. Oh, he chose the weak things to confound the mighty. He chose the base things, the things that are despised, even the things that are not, that he might bring to naught the things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his sight. Oh, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, also verses 27 through 29. Why did God require certain things because salvation is by faith. Friend, you're either going to put your trust in God or you're going to be lost eternally. There's no question about it. He demonstrated this time and time and time again, did he not? In the Old Testament. Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, 2 Kings chapter 5, mighty man with his master. Oh yes, uh, by him Jehovah had given deliverance unto Syria. Uh, But he was a leper who had the terrible disease of leprosy. Now, you remember the story there, of course. We'll not go into detail. He finally wound up at the door of the house of Elisha. Old Elisha sent a servant out and said, Go down and wash seven times the river Jordan. You'll be clean. <laughs> Made him mad. I'm a dignitary, second in command in Syria. I mean, captain of the host. of the, Hey, who has leprosy? You or God? Why are you here? Well, he came to be healed of leprosy. Or the record said he went away in a rage. Fine. You see, that's man's choice. We're made in the image and the likeness of God. That means we're immortal spirits possessed of free moral agency. You can accept it or reject it. If you reject it, of course, you'll lose your soul. Same thing's true in the New Testament. Yeah, but somebody says, what is the sense of dipping in the Jordan to be cured of leprosy? None. <laughs> no, the natural man doesn't receive God's Word. He, to him, it's foolishness. Uh, Oh, but wait, wait, wait. Salvation is by faith? Right. Oh, faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. What did God tell Naaman to do? Uh, go down and wash seven times with the river Jordan. You'll be clean. I'll not do it. Fine. You won't be clean. Oh, but then a servant talked to him. And he said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? Well, sure, that's what he was looking for. Something that would give him a name. Something that would enable him to be recognized. Something that I can do that people... It's not like that. You're a lump of mud with a necktie on if you happen to be wearing a tie. Totally dependent upon God Almighty. You breathe His air. No, you drink His water. No, you eat His food. You wear His clothing. You walk upon His footstool. You dwell literally in the hollow of His hand. You were born into this world, and very quickly you are going to die. And while you're here, you don't own it. The earth and the fullness thereof belong to God. Oh, then He gives me life. Uh, Then to whom should I give my allegiance? I mean, to whose instruction should I give attention? Well, friend, to God. What did God say? Go down and wash seven times the river Jordan. Well, that servant made it pretty simple. And I can see this fellow. He goes down and he strips his clothing down to his underclothes and down in that old muddy Jordan he goes, dips himself once, twice, you know, three, four, five, six times. The leprous is still there. Dipped himself the seventh time when he came up. The leprous was gone. His flesh was as it was in the days of his youth. Why? God said it would be. God said it would. Well, yeah, but, but what does dipping in the Jordan have to do with curing leprosy? Nothing. 
Nothing at all. No, no virtue in the waters of Jordan to cure leprosy. Man, you'd have leper colonies all up and down a little old valley. No, no, no. How was he healed? By faith. Oh, faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. In Joshua, you remember, chapter 6, uh, the first city they coveted was the high wall, well fortified city of Jericho. <laughs> Isn't that something? And boy, I'm sure they had some ideas already about how to, uh, God said, I've given it into your hand. Told him how to arrange his men. And he said, in that order now, you march around one time each day for six days. On the seventh day, march around seven times. Let the priests blow long on the ram's horns. The people give a great shout. The walls will fall down flat. <laughs> Joshua was a military man. I mean, that's, that's no way to take a city up. Oh, they did what God said. The walls fell down flat. Every man went up straight before him. They took the city of Jericho without the loss of a single man. How was Jericho taken? Oh, Hebrews 11. Uh, what is that? Verse 30. Oh, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. But by faith, the wall. Yeah, but when? When they did what God said. A Christian? Oh, he is one who is redeemed, uh, purchased by the blood of Christ. When is one purchased by the blood of Christ? Now, it's true. Christ shed his blood for all men. And that is available to every sinner. But one is not purchased by the blood of Christ until he submits to the instruction provided in the blood-sealed covenant of the Son of God. Somebody says, well, uh, uh, you know, being dipped on the water, there's no connection there between that and remission. Uh, right, right. You see, you're looking at it the wrong way. You know, salvation is by faith. What does faith do? Just what God said. Just do what God said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Oh, and uh, throughout the book of Acts, every person who was saved had to be baptized. Well, certainly there's no question about that. Well, what is the connection? None. It's a matter of faith. People simply do not accept God's will. Friend, a Christian does because a Christian has been purchased by the blood of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Yeah, but then, too, if we had time to deal with it, the Christian is a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Uh, didn't Paul uh, say that in Romans 6, 3 and 4? Don't you know, brethren, that all we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? We were buried, therefore, with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, we also might walk in newness of life. And he goes on to explain that when we come out of the waters of baptism, the old body of sin has gone away. I say, raised a new creation in Christ. Oh, friend, the new creature in Christ now has new thoughts. Yes, sir, he meditates constantly upon the Word of God. And I remember that Paul made the statement, Philippians 4 at verse 8. Oh, yes. He talks about uh, uh, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. The Christian is one who, in submitting himself to the Lord's will, has dedicated his life to the accomplishment of God's will. So he's going to fill his heart and life with the instruction contained in God's Word. Uh, those things that are true, those things that are honorable, those things that are just, those things that are pure, those things that are lovely, and those things that are of good report. Yeah, just like that fellow in the Psalms. Blessed is the man who walketh not of the counsel of the ungodly, or sendeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law doth he meditate day and night. Now he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, who bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he putteth his hand to, it shall prosper. Now, isn't that wonderful, friends? The Christian purchased by the blood of Christ, belongs to Christ, and he is a new creature. Now, sometimes a person in the world says, boy, that's, that's just too narrow. That's, that's too limited. That would destroy your joy, your pleasure. When you know who you are, 
The only source of joy is an understanding of your relationship to the Lord. You see, I am an immortal spirit. I'm going to live forever. Friend, if you want to be happy, if you want to enjoy peace of mind, the only way to do it is to give your life to the Lord. Become a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, dedicating your life to His service. Now, in doing so, there's going to be contention. There's no question about that. You're going to teach the truth, but most religious people are following manuals or disciplines or catechisms, confessions of faith, etc. Uh, religious error. And you're going to be in conflict constantly with that. So you're going to be ridiculed. Why, well, the prophets of the Old Testament, why, well, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and ill-treated, who dwelling in caves and holes of the earth, of whom the world was not worthy. Why did they suffer like that? Because they taught without any misunderstanding the simple instruction of God Almighty. Men won't accept that. And when you do that, you're going to be persecuted. There's no question. Somebody says, well, now, that's judgmental. Yes, in a sense, that is uh, judgmental. But uh, only the truth will make you free. Error will condemn you. Christ came because He loved you. Friend, I'm a Christian. The only reason I would preach the truth in opposition to error is because I love your immortal soul. That's what a Christian is all about. May God help us to understand. Preaching the Gospel with James Watkins is a production of the Gospel Broadcasting Network. Churches of Christ and individual Christians across the United States make GBN and this program possible through their free will contributions. We never ask our friends in the viewing audience for any money, and we always offer our teaching materials completely free of charge. Why don't you call us and enroll in a free Bible study course? Or you might like to have your own copy of today's program on cassette or CD. Just make a note of today's program number and call us toll-free at 1-888-805-3390. Or if you wish, mail your request to GBN Post Office Box 23604, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37422. Thanks for being with us, and join us again for the next Preaching the Gospel. What is a Christian? A Christian is one who contends for truth, just as Christ did. Yes, but that's not popular. Right, the Christian is not trying to be popular in this world. No, no, the Christian is trying to be obedient to the Lord. Why would he contend for truth when so many people believe error? Friends, truth will make you free. The Christian, as Christ, loves the souls of men. He wants you to be with God in eternity. And the only possibility is truth. We cannot alter it. We cannot add to it. We cannot diminish from it. Only the truth will make you free. Sanctify them in truth, thy word is truth. John 17, verse 17. Thus a gospel preacher gives book, chapter, and verse for the teaching that he does. Has no opinions regarding salvation. Just simply sets forth the will of God. Faith in Christ, repentance, confession, baptism for the remission of your sins. Faithfulness in life. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you.